Star Trek The Next Generation. He is also a classically trained stage actor who has performed on Broadway in, among other things, Sunday in the Park with George. And now proving there is life after Star Trek, he is appearing in two enormous summer hits, Phenomenon and Independence Day. Brent, thanks for coming on and welcome to CBS. Great you, to be You're here. a boxing fan, right? Yes, you, I am. Well, how would you rate this fellow De La Hoya? <laughs> He's the best there yeah. is. I mean, I loved when he was talking about uh, painting a mural with his feet. Yeah. That's what it's like. The guy's an artist. He paints not a bad mural with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would hate to have that painting on my face. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> It was interesting in reading about you today and how you got to know about your dad, who died when you were very young, right. through your mom and stories that she would tell about him. Yeah. What did she tell you about your dad? Uh, well, basically, uh, from, from my mother, uh, he was the greatest guy who ever lived. You know, that's the story I got. Mm -hmm. And I don't think she was telling me that just for my sake. I think she actually thought so, too. And, uh, but she was phenomenal. I mean, uh, she raised my brother and I for several years by herself. And uh, she was just great. She'd get out and throw the ball with us and occasionally put on gloves and go a few rounds. Okay. You know, she'd let okay. me win, but I decked her a couple of times. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think she could have taken me if she'd wanted to. Now, tell me, I, I talked about uh, my uncle, the doctor, at the top of the show and how it, it was an influence. I mean, my father thought that if I would be a doctor, all my problems in life would be solved. And you had an uncle who felt pretty much the same way about young Brent. That, yeah. that a medical career for you would be a good thing. Tell, tell me about that. <laughs> all right. Well, my uncle... Dr. Nathan Kotler, great man, uh, taught pre-med, basically, when I was in junior high school to my brother and all of his kids, all of whom have become doctors for the most part. Uh, he had 10 kids. Uh, and every other Sunday for two years, he taught pre-med to us. And uh, Like, did you dissect stuff? And Yeah, and uh, we learned everything there was about the, the human body. And uh, he got me a job, finally, working at St. Luke's Hospital in Houston, Texas, uh, as? I, as an orderly. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I worked uh, in the recovery room for uh, Dr. Michael DeBakey's uh, eminent heart surgeon. Oh, surely. And, um, it's pretty serious work there. It was very serious work. I, I, it was not for me. Uh, I knew instantly that I, that was not the place I should be. I mean, as soon as I put on the, the green outfit, I looked at myself in the mirror and went, Hey, lady! You know, <laughs> it was the disorderly orderly, you know. And uh, actually, I was, uh, I was fired uh, from the job, uh, deservedly so. Why, why, why was that? What happened? Well, they brought in a, a gentleman who'd had a stroke, and uh, they had been operating on him, and they brought him into the recovery room, and uh, all of the doctors were around the bed. My job was to take his uh, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking the man's blood pressure, and he opened up his eyes, and he looked at me, and he said, am I dead yet? And I said, not yet. <laughs> and I felt these guys, the doctors I'll bet grabbed the docs me. went nuts for yeah, that. They yeah, pulled yeah. me away from him. And, uh, <laughs> they love death jokes in the old uh, hall, yeah. <laughs> they screamed at me for a while, and then they left. And uh, the nurse uh, asked me then, she said, well, take this man's temperature. And I said, well, he's unconscious. You know, I'll, I'll take it when he wakes up. And she said, no, just roll him on his side and take and his sir, temperature. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I said, look, I'm 16. I don't do that. <laughs> and she said, uh, you know. Don't be a baby. You want to be a doctor? Take the man's temperature. So I said, all right. So I, I rolled the man on his side, and I inserted. And uh, I'm looking at my watch, and I'm going, come on, two minutes. Let's go. Let's go. You know? And uh, finally, the two minutes was up, and I went to take the thermometer out, but he rolled back onto his oh, back man. again. Yeah. And so I, I rolled him back on his side, and there's all these little beads of mercury and oh, broken yeah. pieces of glass. <laughs> I, uh, I put the glass together and made about half a thermometer, and uh, they had to call the doctors back in Get to the remove other, the other yeah, half of the yeah, thermometer yeah, and, and remove you, me at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, Thank God. you. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> now, I noticed you did a little Jerry Lewis here. Was yeah. he big in your life? <laughs> Jerry was my, my god, you know, when I was a kid, and even still, you know, when I was growing up. Jerry was... I mean, uh, you do him. Did you do him as a kid? Of course. I, I, I took many, many falls down the stairs, you know, at great injury uh, just to be like Jerry. And, uh, and it's not just me. I mean, I think it's common to most guys my age who grew up at the same time uh, loving Jerry. Uh, Jeff Goldblum and I talked about Jerry a lot when we were doing Independence Day. Uh -huh. He was a huge Jerry fan. Um, and not a Dean fan so <coughs> much, huh? I later became a Dean fan. You know, I, I had to mature before I became a Dean fan, but I became a huge Dean fan, ultimately. But uh, when I was a kid, 
my grandparents gave my brother and I a, uh, a Dean and Jerry puppet set that, wow. that, that came with a little record, a little red record that had a routine on it. And uh, because my brother was older, he got first choice and he always took, he took Jerry and I was stuck with Dean, which... And then you do a little puppets with the record, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, cut to uh, three years ago, four years ago, I was at Mark Hamill's house for the telethon, which is a, a religious holiday for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're watching the telethon. He has a huge collection of, of Jerry, Jerry stuff. And uh, he said, oh, you'll never believe what I got today. And he pulls out the puppet, yeah. the exact thing In I the had. Box, yeah. The little red record. It could have been mine. And uh, I actually remembered every joke on the record. I mean, it was, it was a major event in my life when I got it. We are chatting here tonight with uh, Brent Spiner, one of the stars of uh, Independence Day and Phenomenon, also appearing regularly in Star Trek The Next Generation. Back with Brent and hopefully you on the toll-free as time permits after a break. Richie, Florida. Hi, and welcome to CBS. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. How about yourself? Pretty good. Good. Say hi to Brent. He's sitting right here in the chair. Hi, Brent. Hi, Chrissy. Um, I was wondering, what is the fascination with Star Trek? Uh, my I mean, fascination with it or, or the world's fascination with it? I mean, like the whole world's fascination. You know what? I really can't explain it. Uh, I, I'm on the inside of it, but I... I have to think it has something to do with, I, I keep hearing it's about it, it depicting a positive view of the future. Uh, I, I personally think it's about the fact that it celebrates tolerance uh, in a way that nothing else ever has. Uh, you see people, not just people of different races, but people of different, uh, who look like snakes and who look like dogs. and. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody ever comments on that. Nobody ever comments negatively or positively on it. It's totally accepted. It's a piece that does not speak to that which divides species, but rather that which unites species, Precisely. which has been from day one when it was created by... Uh, Gene Roddenberry. It's Gene Roddenberry and, many, and a lot of other people yes. who saw in this concept something of tremendous positive energy for television and for people. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you watch it, Chrissy? Do you like it? No, but my dad, my dad used to watch it when I was younger. Uh, why don't and you, it's still yeah. on. Why don't, why don't you like it, Chrissy? What, 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 how, how would you fix it? Oh, I, I, I wouldn't fix it. I just won't watch it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's nothing personal or anything. It's just, oh, of course. I just don't have a thing for the outer space and those weird creatures and stuff. Well, no wonder she wonders what's, the, what's with the popularity yeah, of the yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for your honesty, Chrissy. You're welcome. Okay, bye now. Bye. <laughs> What a night, huh? <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you watch it? Can't say as I do. <laughs> so what's the deal with it? Anyway? <laughs> when you started doing Star Trek, <clears throat> what were your expectations as to how long this would last? Uh, I had very low expectations really? of it lasting. Yeah, I thought, like everybody else, you can't do it again. I mean, they did it right the first time. How can you recreate this again? And it was, uh, I thought we'd be there a year maybe, and then it'd be hasta la vista. Now, speaking of that, have you seen The Nutty Professor with Eddie Murphy? I haven't seen it yet. As a mm -hmm. Lewis fan, and I'm sure you've seen his Nutty Professor a number of times. 150 okay. times, yeah. Would you go to see the Eddie Murphy remake of the Nutty Professor? Yeah, I okay. would. I mean, Jerry was executive producer of it. So uh, if it's okay with Jerry, it's okay with me. You know, uh, I'd love to see it. Eddie's a remarkable talent, and I, I understand he's fabulous. Mm -hmm. at it. Except, doesn't he play every part in the picture, or just about? <laughs> I think. See, I kind of like movies where different people play, play the parts. Yeah, you so want if your one guy worth, plays right? all the parts, I tend to have a little problem with that. <laughs> Even, and, and Eddie's a great actor, yeah. but I might have a little problem with Yeah, that. I don't think he plays everything, but uh, he plays his entire family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did that in Coming to America. Remember, he played a lot of he parts. He played several characters. Yeah, he's really good at that. He's very good at yeah. that. Yeah. And now, Star Trek, that, again, is an ensemble piece. Yeah. Um, where everybody's kind of equal. Right. And I don't play everybody. No, I know. Yeah. And the same could be said of Friends. You know yes. where I'm going. Now, for this is a big controversy in our business. The Friends cast has said they each won $100,000 an episode or they're out of there. Yeah. And I personally think they ought to get it. You know what? I'm with you. I really think they should get it. And, uh, I mean, obviously this comes from an actor, but uh, there's an English expression, something about putting bums in the seats. I, I think uh, it, it's those kids who put the bums in the seats. That's exactly you know? right. And we're and not referring to the caliber of the people watching the show. No, we're not. <laughs> uh, it seems to be a recurring theme with bums here, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. But, this uh, is a theme show. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, you know what? 
everybody's doing really well with that show. Why shouldn't they? They deserve it. They're terrific. And by the way, it just sold in syndication for, I'm told, $4 million an episode across the board. So, I mean, exactly. there certainly is, a, I mean, it's these cast members who made that kind of thing possible. Right. And nobody's going to get hurt if they get what they're asking for. You know, everybody's coming out smelling like a rose. I mentioned your uh, stage career in New York. And I'm told that you once were in a show, like you're in the biggest grossing movie of the summer. That's right. You once played in the biggest loser on Broadway, The Three Musketeers. Yeah, it's sort of a counterbalance yeah. to this independence thing, you yeah. know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was in uh, uh, Three Musketeers. It's an old Rudolph Fremel operetta. Uh, you <laughs> no, laugh. It's not. You, it is. Really? It, yes, it was a Rudolph Fremel operetta. Beautiful songs. Uh, seriously. Well, no, but, wait, Rudolph Fremel was Roberta. Roberta the, and the Three Musketeers, oh. and yeah, yeah, Only a Rose, you know that song? Oh, sure. That's from Three Musketeers. Really? Yeah, and, uh, but uh, I knew we were in trouble from day one because uh, when the director, when he gave us his concept, he tells the cast his concept, he said, well, this is 1984, and uh, the play was written in 1927, and it's about something that took place in the 17th century, and I'm going to try to combine all three of them into one show. We have and trouble. I'm thinking we're dead. <laughs> we you know, have bad trouble. It's over. Yeah. You know. And uh, uh, there were other omens along the way, actually. The very first day of the show, uh, it was produced uh, partially by the Ringling Brothers Circus. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> trouble. <laughs> and uh, uh, they had actually had a hit uh, a couple of years earlier with a show called Barnum. Barnum sure. Yeah. And, Jim uh, Dale. Yeah. And Glenn Close. Exactly. And... Uh, so anyway, uh, Irvin Feld ran the circus. Oh, he owned the circus. Of course, I remember terrific Mr. Man. Feld, Madison Square Garden. Right, very nice man. Feld actually, the first producer I ever met that I actually liked mm -hmm. very I much. I met Irvin Feld. He's a very yeah. nice man. Great guy. Uh, he was there the first day. He said, "I'm not going to be able to be here tomorrow because uh, the oldest clown in the circus has died, and I'm going to his funeral in Fort Lauderdale. Uh -huh. But I'll be back day after tomorrow." Uh -huh. uh, he went to the funeral had a heart attack at the funeral and died, died. at the funeral, yeah. yeah, which was terrible because he was a great guy. Of course, in my selfish mind, I'm thinking, I'm out of this turkey. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. <You know>? no. <laughs> Next day, his son, Ken, who is also a terrific guy, came memory in. Memory of my father. In huh? memory of my yeah. father, we're going to do this show. And, you know, I'm thinking, please don't do this. Please. <laughs> rest is history, huh? Yeah, exactly. 12 million, yeah. 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 And, <laughs> I really enjoyed your work in Star Trek The Next Generation. I have not seen these two movies, but I look forward to seeing them. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for and having thanks me, for Tom. the great stories. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. Brent Spiner is the guest, now appearing in Phenomenon and Independence Day. Now these messages.